everybody welcome back to the channel we are over here at my shop crafts and it is clutch time we've already went ahead and pulled the cross member out front and rear drive shaft we are uh, getting ready to jack the trans up unbolt the bell housing and uh, rip the clutch out All right, so I'm gonna do this question and answer that I had posted on Instagram, uh, I don't know, probably two weeks ago. I'm finally just getting to it. Um, I apologize in advance if I butcher any of your names. Um, so I'm gonna start from the bottom. Let's see. All right, so the first one I have is from End the Atrocity 717. Um, this question is. Will you buy a Duramax in the future? Um, I've thought about buying a Duramax before. Um, I've always been a Mopar guy, always been a Cummins guy. Um, but I do love an LB7 Duramax. Um, I've known a couple people that have owned them, actually put some money into them. Um, and I know they are basically just super fast off of stock. So, um, and I, I just like the way the LB7 looks. Uh, let's see. Next question. Frost bit diesel performance um, asks, "What first got you into diesel performance?" Um, I've always owned trucks. Um, first was a Chevy. Chevy. See, I'm on. I'm on the Duramax thing now. My first truck was a, a gas 1500. Then I bought a 12 valve. Um, a lot of my friends, even before I even got into the diesel performance. Um, owned Cummins, Power Stroke, Duramax, and, uh, you know, gas just wasn't cutting it, so I bought my first 12-valve, threw the fuel plate in the trash, and, uh, grenaded the transmission in it, so then I, I went up and stepped up to something electrical and something that I knew could make power easily, and then I, I was just going to stay with a, uh, a tuner, an exhaust, and now I'm neck deep in it, if you want to say. Um, I don't know. I just I just like the way diesel sounds. I like the way they run. I know they're expensive, but uh, next question I have is from I'm sorry if I butcher this. Matt Nussbaumer um, asked if you didn't have a Cummins, what truck would you want or have? Um, I mean, if it didn't have to be a Cummins, it would probably be a four-door OBS 7.3, or, like I said, a LB7 Duramax, um, but if I could still have a Cummins, it would probably be a first-gen four-door long bed. Um, I don't know, I kind of like the older body style in every make besides, uh, besides Chevy. Oh. All right, next question I have is from Callus Built. Um, he asks, uh, what is your setup to get 700 horsepower, EFI Live or Smarty? Um, well, being that I only have an 04, I cannot technically get EFI Live unless I do a bunch of standalone, uh, like the injector wire harness and all that good stuff, um, which I'm not really trying to piggyback everything, um, just would cause a bigger problem. Um, so I run Smarty um, with uh, the catcher software. Um, I mean, really, everything else has been explained in the video prior. Um, 150 over XRG injectors, a single 12 millimeter XRG CP3. Uh, as of right now, just a single S463 8310, I believe. Um, some head work, um, the tuning, fast fuel system, fast sump. Uh, I think that's it. It's not a big list. Can we um, do this clutch yet? <laughs> Next uh, question is from the Nuss Bus. <laughs> <laughs> um, he asks, why haven't you put tow mirrors on your truck and color matched them? Because I don't tow anything. What is it, a moose? <laughs> I don't tow anything. Um, I have a gooseneck. Don't use it. It's coming out. 
Um, I have really no reason to tell anything. I'm sure there's going to be some people that are going to be like, well, why do you have a truck then? Well, I bought the truck because I wanted to build the truck to make it go fast, make it look nice, not to be a workhorse. Race your truck. It has its own um, style of work, if you want to say, and that style is just to go fast. Um, so that's why I don't need tow mirrors. Um, plus, I like to be different. Everybody else has tow mirrors. Um, so that's why I stayed with the stock mirrors. Um, it's just different. Everybody puts tow mirrors on their trucks. I need to sleep more. Psh, little mud bag, dude. No, I don't want to hear. You sleep a little bit. Okay, the last one that I have is from Cody Gibson Seven, and he asks. How does your Nitto 420s do in the rain and snow? Well, Cody, that's kind of a, a given answer. Um, just in two-wheel drive, um, they suck. They suck, I'm not going to lie. They suck. Um, especially with a little extra power added on top of them, you don't get traction in the rain or snow. Um, Four-wheel drive, though, I have absolutely no problem in the snow um, I've driven already this year when the trucks running um, yeah stop smile <laughs> um, I've driven uh, what have we gotten six maybe seven inches of snow this year it was the biggest storm we had four-wheel drive it does fine um, I mean it gets a little hairy here and there but otherwise it's all right um, that will conclude the Q&A um, you can always just message me on Instagram if you have any questions, and uh, I'd like to do these more often, um, especially as more people show up. Um, if you have any other questions, just leave them in the comments below, and I'll I'll do my best to answer them. Rip the clutch out. Um, I'll show you what the new clutch is looking like. So we got our new fork, new. Uh, flywheel bolts, a new throw out bearing, and our Valair triple disc that is going to be, if it'll go back in, holding the power for this thing. So we got the shifter out, the shifter boot, center console, and the four wheel drive linkage. Always remember to disconnect that linkage because if you don't and you drop the trans, you are going to break that four-wheel drive shifter. Believe me, it happened the last time. But, you got everything out on the inside. Always plug up your hole. You don't want anything, uh, any of that crap falling down inside of there. But, we are going to uh, get a trans jack underneath this and Undo the bell housing bolts and drop her out. Please. Huh? Remember, take your hydraulics out before you drop the trans, especially if they're brand new hydraulics, and just move them out of the way. Always make sure that that pin comes out as well. You don't want to uh, don't want to lose that or break it because then you need another set of hydraulics. But now it's just undo the bell housing bolts. Already got the trans supported. And then it's time to pull her back and drop her down and take a look at the mess that is created. Well, trans is out. And I'd say she got a little hot. But also, the forks, or the teeth, yeah, they're pretty uh, bent up. So we're going to get her out of here and really dig into it and look at it as to why it failed but yeah I'd say it got a little hot what do you think John uh, just a little <laughs> well it's out and uh, just I'm standing five feet from it and it stinks it's uh, it's definitely seen its better days um, first off awesome. for all that bearing she got a little hot a little hot but then the fork 
there's almost no grooves and it is chewed up. Chewed up. A little hot, a little couple burn marks, some, some scoring. This is what I showed in the truck. These teeth are not supposed to really bend down that far. The one actually isn't so bad, but the one is pretty bad. Some of these springs are actually seized up. Flywheel, pretty burn up. The pilot bearing is basically seized. So, now we do the uh, reinstall. Jump. If that's not the most beautiful thing ever, a freely moving pilot bearing, no barn marks, and that is what clutch discs are supposed to look like. No bent teeth. Well, time to clean up all the oil and everything else that's underneath inside the bell housing and whatnot, and put her back together. So, after you get the flywheel in, get some brake clean, clean the whole surface off, make sure everything's clean mating surface, you don't want anything in there, grease, blah, 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 blah. And then, just clean your entire bell housing out, make sure that you throw a little bit of lube, run your, uh, your plates on it to get some lube in the, uh, in the teeth of the, the plates. Work everything down, you're uh, ready to put everything back together. Also, these are torqued to 85 foot pounds. No more, no less. So, we got everything torqued down. Everything's aligned. Hopefully. <laughs> Just uh, removing this sound deadening firewall crap. I gotta get this out of here too still. Don't need it. Looks like uh, looks like hell with it in there, drooping down and whatnot. So does that. But we are ready to uh, push the trans back up in. Hopefully it'll uh, hopefully it'll line up. Everything's properly greased up. Fork bearing. Everything moves freely. Spines greased up. I think we're ready to go back in the truck. Well, this took, uh, what? 12 hours? Yeah, no, 13. 13. 13 hours to do a clutch, people. We, uh, we ran into some problems trying to get the, uh, the trans itself back in the truck and uh, so we ended up having to take the uh, the transfer case off which we should have done in the first place but I never had to do that before and this throw bearing is freaking loud and uh, so it was it was uh, it took a lot of time to get just the trans line back up and then to get the transfer case lined back up was another chore. I'm sorry, I didn't get much. I can go over it very easily on how it was done. But, uh, hey, it runs. I gotta get used to a triple disc now because it feels like I'm just driving first there, driving stick first again. Oh, man. All right, since I didn't get very good uh, visual representation on how you uh, install a clutch on an NV5600. Um, I'm gonna try and verbally go over it right now. Uh, like I've, I've mentioned that I did order a Valair triple disc uh, street clutch. Handles a thousand horsepower. Um, and that's, that's the stopping point, hopefully. Um, so basically, I mean, it's how you would really rip a trans out. Jack the truck up. Um, 
Jack the truck up, jack everything, make it safe. You know, you don't want anything falling on you. Take the bell housing bolts out, take your drive shafts out, take your cross member off. Make sure you have a trans jack, and not a huge one either. Um, that We ran into a big snag because the, the jack was taking up way too much room and we couldn't get uh, we couldn't get into certain places to do certain things. Um, something that I have learned, take your transfer case off. I don't care how hard it is. You're dealing with a, uh, I forget how much NV5600 weighs, probably five, 600 pounds, four or five, 600 pounds. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I know somebody probably will. Um, and the, the way they are, they don't really have a plate that you can sit the trans on on the jack. So you got to kind of just find a, a mating place for it. Well, where we chose, it was teetering. It got very top heavy. So every time we'd, you know, bring the jack up, the trans dipped down or it dipped way too high up. It would never fully center. So we ended up... Uh, ripping the old um, transfer case off and uh, I don't know John probably remembers it probably took us 20 minutes we were fighting with this thing for hours keep in mind I'm doing this on the ground in my shop um, I was going to put it on the lift but I just didn't feel like holding a I don't know probably a 60 pound flywheel above my head and whatnot. Uh, this is the second time I've done a clutch. Um, both times have taken me a very long time. Um, I mean, I'd rather take more time than not, and then uh, not mess something up. So once you know you got everything backed out, then you just uh, basically pull everything apart. Make sure everything is very clean. Um, get all your oil. Uh, if you got anything that exploded, like your, uh, well, I've seen, if you have your uh, throwout bearing, say your throwout bearing exploded, whatever, make sure you get just everything out. You don't want any of that on the new clutch. Um, always make sure that you're cleaning all of the surfaces, not not the, uh, the plates itself, but the flywheel, brake clean, does a great job. Um, you know, check your, well, Usually you get a new fork and a new bearing. Um, you know, make sure everything's greased up. Make sure you slide every single plate on so all the grooves, all the teeth on the plates are properly and evenly lubed. Um, I'm saying um a lot. Excuse me. Then, uh, really, it's repeat process backwards. Put your uh, Put your new clutch in. Put your uh, your new fork and your new bearing on. Torque everything. I believe a flywheel was 95 foot-pounds, and the plates bolted to the flywheel were 25 foot-pounds. Um, take it from my advice, it helps to have a barring tool or some sort of tool to hold the uh, the flywheel in place as you're torquing because um, it wants to move of course um, this kid just threw a big chunk of ice on his mother's car <laughs> reminds me of myself when I was younger well, I'm still young but when I was this kid's age but uh, yeah it, it helps a lot to take your transfer case off it relieves a lot of stress um, and like I said, within 20 minutes, we were able to shimmy the, uh, the trans in, find its place, uh, get everything lined up. Oh, always have an alignment tool. It helps to have an alignment tool. Um, if not, you're eyeballing everything and you might be this far off, but it would make the biggest difference. Um... But I definitely, 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 definitely have to get used to driving with a triple disc now. Especially on a daily driving, daily driven, sorry, I'm a little sleep deprived. Daily driven street truck. Um, just the, the five minute drive home, I could <laughs> feel the huge difference between a dual and a triple. Um, 
it's actually not as noisy as I thought it would be. Um, the dual disc was very noisy. It, it chattered a lot. Um, the hydraulics were really loud. Um, like, I'm sorry, not the hydraulics. When you would push your hydraulics in, it was just really, really loud. Um, I'm trying to go over everything else. Um, yeah, just always, just make sure you have the proper tools. Uh, wow. Proper tools. Make sure you have the proper parts. Always have your safety equipment. You don't want stuff falling in your eyeballs. Um... But maybe later I'll give it a little bit of a, a walk around, actually visualizing and showing you how it goes. Um, but as for right now, I got to get some sleep. It's been a very, very long night. But once again, I, I, <laughs> it, I wouldn't be anywhere without John. John got me to work, got the truck to work, got it home when it broke down. Um... You know, just big shout out to those people that are always there to help you out. Um, you guys know who you are. But, also, I want to try and do another question and answer here soon. So, if you get this far in the video, drop a, uh, drop a question down below. In the next, uh, the next vlog, I will do my best to answer them to the fullest. Um, as always, and if you got this far... Give this video a thumbs up if you did like it. Subscribe if you already haven't. And um, I will see you guys next time.